What is up everybody? It's Donnie with El Gallo Fly Fishing Lodge and today I'm going to show you how to tie a Charlie's pole dancer. So this uh, this pattern was designed by Charlie uh, Bicharat, which is uh, a Californian dude and he came to realize that uh, this walk the dog sort of a sort of an action that you can get from a Zara Spook or a Zara Puppy or some of the older like bass flies um, was really, really good for, for eliciting uh, predatory responses of fish that eat other fish, right? So this sort of walk the dog motion uh, along the top of, of the water um, does really, really well, right? So he looked at this stuff and came up with the, the materials that, uh, that make that action happen. So dude's a genius. So this is, this is the way that I tie these flies. There are probably a million ways to skin a cat, but this is, uh, this is the one that I use. So we'll get after it. So we're gonna start off with the hook, which is uh, Gamakatsu SL12S. Uh, like these hooks a lot. They're very strong, very sharp. They stay sharp for a long time. We're gonna start off with some white thread. Uh, this is a pretty, pretty beefy thread right here. We're just going to go towards the back of the shank, right towards the bend. Clip that off real fast, throw some hard as nails on it so it doesn't come unraveled in the water. Then we're going to make a dubbing loop. You can use cactus chenille on this, which is really nice and a whole lot easier. I don't have any large, that's what it would take, but uh, I can show you a real quick trick here to make a dubbing loop real easy. Like I don't, I don't even have the tool for it, but I'm just gonna take some, some uh, sparkle wing. This is silver. Bring that all the way to the front like that right there. Then we'll take some pearl. Do the same thing with it. Now I have a tool for this, but um, I don't know where it's at. So I'm just gonna use my bobbin instead. But what you can do is just start wrapping this around. like this and it starts twisting that stuff up. If I were doing a lot of these, I would actually invest the time to go find my, uh, my dubbing tool. But as you can see, that does a pretty good job of it right there. You just kind of tease that out a little bit. And you just start wrapping it around the back end of this thing. So the idea of this is actually um, the wing is going to go up and over this and that's going to make it to where it, it has kind of like a keel. So instead of, instead of being, um, you know, having the tail come off like this and keeping a straight line, it's going to have a wing up and over it and it'll have more of a tendency of getting that action that, that we want, which is, uh, kind of a side-to-side -side action. And build up this head just a little bit here so that I can give myself something to glue this, this popper head on. All right, then we're gonna tease that dude out. with my dog brush. All right, so you can leave this long or you can cut it off. I kind of prefer to cut it off, about like that right there. Then we start making our wing. For this, I really like EP Fibers uh, Game Change Blend. It's good stuff. Got really nice sparkle. It looks like 
it looks like scales in the water. And then, uh, you know, this stuff really moves around a lot. So I'll try to stiffen it up a little bit with some SF fibers. But you want this about four times the length of the, the shank of the hook. So I'm gonna bring that back, double this over. I'm gonna kind of pinch it down a little bit to flatten it out and then hold what I've got there, right? This one's a little bit long, but it's all right. From there, I'm gonna go with the SF fibers in white as well. You don't need just a terrible, huge amount of these things, but you just wanna stiffen it up just a little bit. The cool thing about this stuff is um, it's not straight, it's not a straight fiber, right? It's kind of crinkle cut a little bit, so it gives a little bit of a bigger profile and it has a nice sparkle in it as well. All right, then we're gonna go with a little bit of a darker SF fiber. This is a light tan color. About three or four wraps on that and then pinch it down. And again, I mean, you just want this to be kind of up. And if you want to, you can kind of go around it a couple of times like this to actually pull it up a little bit. trim her down. Okay. You can beef these things up with hackles or do some of the other things with it. Um, I'm gonna leave this pretty sparse right here just like this. This is actually all that I'm going to do to this fly. So I'm gonna whip finish this deal off. And then show you how we're gonna do this head. I'm actually going to add my, uh, my glue in right now. And this is gonna give it a little bit of a chance to dry a little bit more and really soak into the, the thread of this dill. It's kind of a pain in the butt to try to get this stuff to, to close up and seal. So you don't want to use too much and you want it to be a little bit dry. All right, so what I've got here is a popper head, and it's a little bit longer than just a, a short popper. It's kind of, it's not necessarily a pencil popper, but it's it's pretty long, like a 3XL long deal. Um, so what you want to do is find, if there's a slit in the bottom of it right here, you want to find that, and you want to kind of keep your finger on it, right? So how this is going to be oriented is it's going to be backwards on this deal, right? But we need to carve out this part right here, right? So in order to do that, you can either use, um, you can either use a razor blade or you can use a Dremel tool. So here's how you can do it with a Dremel, right? So you kind of just hold it real sturdy like this. This stuff might not be the best thing to breathe. But you want it kind of concaved a little bit.
elongate that a little bit more right there. And that's the shape that we're looking at right there. While you've got it out, take your razor blade and kind of go along the side of it and make yourself a nice flat area right here so you can glue your eyes down. And they'll actually have a chance of staying on there a little bit better. Okay, now then, <clears throat> for my next trick, open that slit up a little bit like that, and just place that dude right there just like that. And then pinch it down. And you're gonna have to wait for it to dry. So, um, while we're waiting, I'll give you the uh, the sick joke of the day. If uh, if you're a little sensitive to this, you might want to fast forward or <laughs> turn the volume down or or whatever. But um, there's a newlywed couple, and they go to this hotel that's by this beautiful lake, and uh, the clerk checks them in. He's thinking, "Oh, what a great thing! They're going to have a beautiful romantic weekend." Well, uh, in about 20 minutes, the gentleman comes down and he's got his fishing rods and he's ready to go, right? So he jets out and uh, goes and catches some fish. The next morning, same thing, gets up, goes out, goes fishing. He's got his rods, his tackle box, some bait, and he's, he hauls ass. So this clerk is thinking to himself, man, whenever I was younger, whenever I first got married, I would not be fishing. What's up with this dude? So this happens a couple more days and he stops him and says, hey man, not to pry or anything, but um, you know, why aren't you making love with your wife? <laughs> and the guy says, well, um, this is kind of embarrassing, but my wife has gonorrhea. So the clerk says, uh, oh, okay. Um, well, I mean, there's more than one way to boogie down. Have you ever thought about oral? And the guy's like, well, she's got kind of halitosis too. I'd, I'd like to stay away from there as much as I can. And the guy goes, um, okay. Have you ever considered, you know, the backdoor method? <laughs> and it, the guy says, "Well, um, you know, she she kind of she kind of has diarrhea too. So, no, that's that's completely out of the question." And the the clerk looks concerned and confused and says, "Why in the world would you marry this woman?" And the fisherman says, "Well, um, she has worms, and I really love to fish." <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> We're dry now. Sorry, sorry about the horrible joke. But um, if you like those jokes like that, let me know. We'll keep them going. All right, so the next thing is to glue down our eyeballs or to actually paint this thing. So I'm going to actually paint it before I glue it down. And this is just a, a tan Sharpie. I just like to make that make that top just a little bit more dark. And I like to add a little bit of orange just right under the bottom here. Then we'll go for our shoe goo. Try to open it without breaking it. Shugu's good stuff. It um, it moves with the fly, 
so there's a little bit of less chance of it um, actually coming off with your eyeballs. Does a good job of keeping eyes cemented down. These are five millimeter um, silver dome eyes. I bought these things by the thousands. And it's been a good investment. Okay, and that is your Bisharat's pole dancer. I like to add these black spots on the back side of it too. Just take a Sharpie and give yourself a nice black spot there. And I've seen that with a lot of different things, all the way from shad to sardinas. But that, right there, is your pole dancer. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this. If you found some value in it, please let me know. Leave a comment. Um, smash that like button if you would please. Subscribe to us. Um, let us know also if there are any any patterns that you might want to learn. You know, if I know something, I'll let you know. If I don't know anything about it, I won't tell you anything. So, I'm Donnie with El Gallo Fly Fishing Lodge, and uh, thank you for watching.